Wales, no hits Winchester. We are allowed to put as much salt as we need to on the roads. Hampshire Farm confirms bird flu. But if we can keep most of the wild birds out of the pens, we're halfway there. World and European success for Jiu Jitsu champion in Southampton. Um, Lisbon, Portugal, I just won the Euro. and welcome to this special edition of Winchester News Online, which has all been filmed on smartphones. Winchester woke up to a coating of snow this week as temperatures plummeted. Our transport correspondent, Annabelle Norson, looks at how Hampshire services are prepared for icy times ahead. The long-anticipated Arctic blast has finally hit Winchester, but we're not going to be snowed in just yet. With Hampshire being the third largest county, Hampshire highways are prepared with 25,000 tonnes of salt and 55 gritting vehicles for local roads. Um, I think we um, do get a lot of support financially um, and we also get a lot of support from our county council members and we are allowed to put as much salt as we need to on the roads to keep the travelling public safe in Hampshire. But not everybody saw the snow as a problem. Overnight, there were fears of widespread transport disruption and school closures. Two schools were closed and although it was very cold first thing in the morning, problems were not as great as they could have been. With Met Office snow warnings decreasing, this could all be over by the end of the week. Annabelle Nolson, Winchester News Online. A case of bird flu has been confirmed in Hampshire. Ryan Hewlett has the story. Three people have tested negative for bird flu and work is underway to slaughter 10,000 chickens following an outbreak at a farm in Hampshire. The Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs has imposed a one kilometre movement restriction zone on the contaminated farm. But for Hampshire poultry farmer, Ruth Wyatt, her animals are like her family. Her Twyford farm remains clean and safe and her birds are uncontaminated. The most recent outbreak poses almost no threat to humans. But there are steps that can be taken to hinder the spread of bird flu. Well, for a start, you see the feeders we've got? Um, most birds can't use those, so that deters a lot of the wild birds. I've uh, got the foot bath up there to, for people to disinfect their feet. Obviously you can't disinfect birds' feet, unfortunately. But if we can keep most of the wild birds out of the pens, we're halfway there. Because we've, where we talk to death, death firm trading standards and animal welfare a lot, we know that we're going to be the first, one of the first people to know if there is a problem. Whilst this farm remains free from bird flu, farmers, the Department of Environment, Food and Rural Affairs will certainly be keeping an eye out in the upcoming weeks. Ryan Hewlett, Winchester News Online, Twyford. People in Hampshire are being asked to pay more for their policing. We've been talking to the county's Police and Crime Commissioner to find out why. Residents in Winchester could end up paying more in council tax to make up for police budget cuts following proposals by the force. Hampshire's Police and Crime Commissioner said extra money could increase employment levels in the force. We've lost £80 million pounds from government grant and I'm asking the public to contribute another £2 million pounds to the police budget. The public will know that there is a neighbourhood policing structure right across Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. In a policing plan, the Commissioner put forward a 1.99% increase for policing charges. The proposed increase would raise council tax by six pence per week for the average Bandy property. This would mean a three pound and seven pence increase per annum. It would also generate an extra two million pounds for the next two years, which could employ 43 police officers. A survey showed that the majority of residents are in support of the increase, but some councillors say otherwise. Councillor Peter Mason told Winnell, the police precept increases every year and I consider it should not continue to do so. Although the Police and Crime Panel have supported the Commissioner's proposals, there is still a question as to whether or not the plans will go ahead. Amy Best, Winchester News Online. The tax increase comes before the Independent Police Complaints Commission revealed that Hampshire is one of the most complained about forces in the country. With me now is our crime correspondent, Brooke Perriam. So Brooke, tell me a bit more about what's happened. Well, Laura, complaints across a number of forces in England and Wales have now reached an all-time high, with 1,000 complaints against Hampshire Police last year. That's a 10% increase. 
The majority of the complaints are actually due to neglect or failure of duty by the officers. And um, So why are there more complaints? There could be a number of reasons for this. The IPCC say it could be down to changes the police have made in what makes a, what defines a complaint. It could be down to staff cuts within the force. Uh, there, there are less officers, but of course the same population. It could be due to the standard of our police service slipping, or it simply could be due to um, people being more aware that they can actually complain about the service the police provide. Okay, thank you, Brooke. A recent proposal by developers to build hundreds of new houses in Bishop's Waltham is still awaiting a decision. The council says that the houses would meet the ever-growing demand, but not everyone is happy. Lynn Arumba Williams has more. Winchester City Council is considering the proposal, which may eventually expand to 650 homes. The Albany Farm site is a good site. South Cock Homes are a local developer and with a good reputation. So I think overall, it's a, their outline planning application is something which is I, I would consider very positively. Southcott Homes provided us with the type of development they have in mind, but some locals say the development would ruin the rural character of the area. With plans still in process, residents in Bishop's Waltham can only wait to hear the verdict from Winchester City Council. Lynn Irumba Williams, Winchester News Online, Bishop's Waltham. The winter months can be an expensive time for many, especially the elderly. Cold weather conditions are leading to fatalities. Our environment correspondent, Holly Broughton, has more details. Thousands are turning off their heating due to high energy prices. Age UK reported recently that over 600,000 older UK residents were left living in fuel poverty. I think the price of everything's going up. Gas, electricity. The only thing that's going down at the moment is oil. It affects the likes of pensioners like me, yes. I think if we take a very long-term view, we should do a lot more to insulate our houses. Age UK reported that 1.7 million people can't afford to heat their homes. 36% say they live mainly in one room to save money. And each winter, one person dies every seven minutes. Here, at the Age UK Winchester branch, warm jackets and sensible advice are on offer. The government has increased cold weather payments from £8.50 to £25, but for some, it's too little too late. 24,000 you know, elderly people are dying needlessly. Most people have got a choice between actually heating their homes and actually eating food. I mean, that's... That's the way that it is at the moment. Throughout February and March, Age UK will be holding major public meetings to discuss energy bills and fuel poverty. Holly Broughton, Winchester News Online, Winchester. The weather is cold, but politics is hotting up. First year journalism students at the University of Winchester have started a poll called the Winchester 50, looking into students' voting intentions. Pollsters interviewed 50 students simultaneously on Monday and compiled results excluding those who said they would not vote. Midoriko Kitagaki has the details. Students like these in colleges around the country may typically not be associated with politics, but they may be about to be involved in a political earthquake. Our polls show the Conservatives have a clear lead on campus. If these figures or anything like them are correct, the Conservatives are on track to win Winchester easily. Another bombshell is the rise of the Greens as they take a third of the votes. Labour have been squeezed to less than a quarter of the students' support, apparently by the rise of the Greens. Significantly, the UKIP bandwagon is failing to roll with the students if our poll is right. This is good news for the Conservatives. But the best news of all for the Tories is that students seem to have deserted the Liberal Democrats. In the past, the student vote was reckoned to be crucial in delivering the seats to the Lib Dems. If students vote as indicated by our poll, the Liberals would have little chance and Conservative G. Bryan would find himself in one of the safest seats in the country. Winnell will keep tracking students' opinions until up to the general election. Midoriko Kitalaki, Winchester News Online. Residents of Winnell are being given the opportunity to make suggestions on how the council can improve their local community. Rebecca Herbert went to find out more. Parking, broadband and public footpaths are just some of the big concerns of Winchester residents. Events like these have been organised to let local business owners and residents have their say. It's, uh, it's not so late. Winnell's changing all the time and um, you, know, you look back over the last 10 years and Winnell has changed enormously you know, in that period. We know what the issues are. 
what we need to do is understand fully more from the residents of businesses. So as we start to grow and improve the district, how we can actually grow those issues as well. So we can accommodate residents and businesses for that parking business. Get those issues right before we start looking at introducing potentially new businesses into their new, into their new business premises. But some people don't agree with these plans. Well, personally, I think it's a little bit late to make these changes. I mean, the money can be put to a much better use. Although the plans are still ongoing, it seems Winnell residents have already started to have a firm grasp on their community's future. Rebecca Herbert, Winchester News Online, Winnell. Driving past Barton Farm, you wouldn't notice anything extraordinary, but over the past few weeks, archaeologists have been unearthing its prehistoric past. Our community correspondent, Alice Wheatley, reports. Buried and forgotten for around 2,000 years, this intact late Iron Age or early Roman pot has been unearthed by archaeologists at Barton Farm. It's um, really well preserved and there's barely a scratch on it. The entire landscape's rich with archaeological sites and it just links into this much wider landscape of occupation over the last um, two to three thousand years. So we definitely have some Roman activity, some Iron Age activity, um, right through to there's probably some medieval activity, but we know from written sources that in the 18th century there was a Hessian mercenary camp here. The pot is to be taken to a lab and examined further before being donated to the Hampshire Cultural Trust. Archaeologists will continue to uncover buried treasure at this site for the next 16 weeks. Alice Wheatley, Winchester News Online. Gone are the days of turkey twizzlers, as following new government legislation, children in Hampshire schools are being fed a more nutritious school lunch. Sophie Hannon has the details. It turns out school lunchtime isn't just about lumpy custard and sponge pudding, as Hampshire County Council say they are ahead of the game when it comes to complying with the government's new rules for healthy school dinners. Nutrition is directly linked to education and well-being and the progress of children, particularly in schools. We now take Department of Government guidelines very seriously. That is monitored and we make sure that all our meals are to the modern standard which is set in uh, by the government. These government enforced standards which state that all school meals must include at least one portion of salad or vegetables a day have only come after rigorous campaigning, with charities such as School Food Matters stating that they have long campaigned to keep junk food out of school and that it's good to work alongside a policy which has children's health and well-being at its core. With experts saying that healthy school dinners may improve children's health, behaviour and motivation, it seems like lunches like the ones in Hampshire may not just be pushed around the plate. Sophie Hannum, Winchester News Online. The Royal National Lifeboat Institution in Hampshire had a busy 2014 with 388 lifeboat launches and 580 people rescued. Our reporter, Henry Nixon, met the crew based at the busiest station in the county. In an emergency, the crew have 90 seconds to be on the boat, ready to save lives from the time they first arrive at the station. There are seven lifeboat stations along Hampshire's coast. Last year, the busiest of these, based in Portsmouth, was responsible for rescuing 80 people. Portsmouth, uh, it's, in, it's a huge asset for Portsmouth. Um, not only does it provide the lifeboat cover, it provides the lifeguard cover, it provides safety for all the water users, commercial users, pleasure cruisers. We're a very, very close group here. Um, we all laugh and joke together, we all socialise together. We all come from completely different backgrounds. But when we come down to the station, we all sort of gel together. We all have a common goal and we're all here to help save lives at sea. Capsized yachts, sinking fishermen and panicked horses are a few of the situations of 30 volunteer crew members encountered in 2014. Henry Nixon, Winchester News Online, Portsmouth. Now, over to Ross Perkins with the latest in sports. Thanks. A Romsey-based jiu-jitsu fighter has returned from Texas as a world champion. Trevor Birmingham came top in the G division of the Northern American Grappling Association World Championships. The 41-year-old also recently returned from Lisbon, Portugal as European champion. Elliot Buckley went down to Southampton to find out more. Hampshire now has its very own world champion in jiu-jitsu thanks to this Romsey-based fighter, Trevor Birmingham. Trevor, formerly on the British judo team, triumphed in the Naga World Championships and his most recent success was in the European Championships. 
Lisbon, Portugal. I just won the Euro, which is a really, really good medal to win. You know, I'm really proud of this one. Okay, I've worked really hard to get here. I'd like to think I inspired people, especially some of like, the younger people coming through. I run classes in Andover. Um, basically, I run multi classes down at XL Gym here. Um, yeah, and I'm, there's obviously there's new people come through all the time. And I like to put a good input into people and that, and like to see them come on. He's not resting on his laurels though, and wants to win titles in many other countries. So I'm actually competing in the Pan American Championships in California, okay, in March, and then I'm going to fight in the I want to fight in the Abu Dhabi World Professional Championships in the Arab Emirates. It's clear that Trevor is one of the best in the world at his sport, and with several more tournaments on the horizon. This jiu-jitsu fighter from Romsey is without doubt amongst the very best in the world. Elliot Buckley, Winchester News Online, Southampton. A team of students from the University of Southampton have won the Midlands Cup in snooker. The success is the team's first ever victory in the tournament, and they have established themselves as one of the country's finest university teams in the sport. Mark Betts took the time out to go and meet them. Congratulations, our order, at the University of Southampton as the snooker and pool team win the Midlands Cup for the very first time. The team dominated the group stages as they progressed comfortably beating Imperial College London 9-1 and even in the final defeating Kent University 6-4. Curtis Habersraw, who captained the team of five, was happy with the winning start to the year. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, so I've never won the Midlands Cup before, so it's nice to be the first captain today. Well, it's nice to be for a benchmark for other teams so they know who Southampton are. The Cup is even more vital to the club as they faced pressure from the university last year. They tried to close us down last year. Um, hopefully win in the future, hopefully get to recognise us as a serious sport. And actually closing it down for storage. That's a bit of an insult, really. Our team are hoping to keep this form up in upcoming competitions. And hopefully be potting a lot more balls. Mark Betts, Winchester News Online, Southampton. And that's all for sports. Back to the studio. Choir singing, bell ringing, calligraphy. Winchester Cathedral opened its doors for their annual behind the scenes look at the running of the monumental building. Victoria Barclay went down to see what was going on. Winchester Cathedral is opening its door for the first time to host an open evening to let the public see the inner workings. Cleared of all chairs, the nave was opened up to allow staff and volunteers to explain what goes on that often goes unnoticed. From rooftop tours, gardeners and the country's largest team of modern day scribes. The cathedral is known to hold novelist Jane Austen's grave, but unknown to most is that she hasn't always stayed in one place. 120 years after her death, the cathedral received central heating, so poor Jane had to be moved six inches to the north. So again, Jane is again at rest, but now she's warm. Sometimes people are a bit frightened to come across the uh, come across the threshold, it's a bit intimidating. So this is a moment really saying, you know, no charge, just come and find out what's going on. After this inside look, the public can appreciate the cathedral even more. Victoria Barclay, Winchester News Online, Winchester. Last but not least, our Features Editor, Beth Tremelling, gives us a preview on W2 this week. This week in W2 Magazine. We had exclusive access to the Work in Progress fashion show. There was a great coffee house sessions with performer Andy Williamson. In health and fitness, it's all about yoga. Baby's pose. Sit on your heels and bring your forehead to rest comfortably on the mat in front of you. And finally, here's some snowy snaps of this week's weather. For more award-winning news, features and sports, head to winall.co.uk. Goodbye.